Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Have you ever wondered how the tour professionals get their arms down? Are they pulling? Are they pushing? Are they letting them fall? Or is there something else going on? If you've been watching the channel regularly, you actually already know the answer to the question. Because we've been talking a lot about how the tour professionals swing a club, how they use their body, turn their hips, and all the little kind of tricks that they're using to do this. And during that, I have actually mentioned a couple of muscles and a couple of movements which are actually responsible for getting their arms down. Now, in the past, uh, especially when I was growing up, we talked an awful lot about ringing a bell or even letting the arms kind of free fall in the downswing. Um, but in the modern swing where we're talking about kind of one plane, shoulders and arms moving in the same plane with one another, um, we don't actually have to really actively do an awful lot with our arms at all at the top of the golf swing in order to bring them down. And I'm going to show you why right now. The big trick really once you actually get to the top of the swing is going to be changing direction at the right time. A lot of people still tend to get to the top of the swing, wait until the club stops and then start the downswing. Where you'll see them, if not the majority of professionals, there is one that stands out who doesn't do it, but the majority of golf professionals are actually changing direction with their body when their arms are still moving up. So to a certain extent, this change of direction is going to actually stop the arms moving up and start to move them back down. Then the last time, or the time before last, we were talking about the talk to core rotational movements, the shoulders and the hips. The shoulder movement, if you remember, we had this movement at the top where the trail shoulder almost tries to kind of row backwards. I like that kind of idea of the kind of the kayak trying to paddle backwards with the trail shoulder. So when they get up to the top of the swing, the shoulder is actually kind of pulling back and down. And obviously wherever the trail arm is at that point when it starts to be pulled down by the trail shoulder, that's basically going to start actually not only the trail arm, but because both arms are on the club, the club to come down. Directly after the shoulder has made its movement, you start to make a movement with what they call the latissimus, which is a big muscle in your back. And as you crunch the latissimus, which is a really responsible for the side bend in the golf swing, you can see that from the back camera best, it's actually getting the thoracic spine bending and the head coming down. What it's also doing is pulling the arm down because what a lot of people don't know is the latissimus is actually attached to the arm somewhere under the bicep and that means that if you contract the latissimus you are not going to be able to stop your arm from coming down. In fact if I pull down my shoulder blade and then try to lift up my arm I'm restricted. If I then contract the latissimus and try and lift up my arm I'm restricted even more so you can see that my arms could not be higher than this point if I have the right contraction here. So if you're really thinking about it, if you get to the top of your swing and pull down before you try to contract, it's very likely that your arm is going to be in the wrong place to actually get through the golf ball. So what I like to do is get the feeling again of the hands getting to a roundabout shoulder height, at least that's my interpretation, when I actually change direction and I'm trying to time my backswing so that the rotation of the body and the shoulders is complete at exactly the same time as my hands reach shoulder height. Now I know that they're going to continue further from there simply because of the inertia that I have in the club, and the momentum rather I have in the club, but when I change direction then I am not actively pulling or pushing with the arms. On the contrary, 
I have a feeling of them being passive. And as I rotate back down, pulling the, the trail shoulder down, contracting the latissimus, that is what's pulling the club down on plane. Now that doesn't mean that the arms are doing nothing, especially your lead arm. When you actually change the direction, don't forget the momentum of the club is still trying to pull back. So as you turn in the opposite direction, your lead arm is gonna have to brace and hold its angles. Otherwise it's likely to bend. You will get some kind of bending in the trail wrist and some more bending in the trail elbow, but that will happen perfectly naturally and is all part of this kind of laying the club back thanks to the rotation and the dropping of the trail shoulder and this pulling down with the, the body side and the latissimus, which is actually actively pulling down your trail arm. I suppose it was quite obvious, wasn't it? Because children are doing it without thinking about it. I don't think there's any kids out there thinking, drop your arms or pull down with your arms. They're simply copying the golf professionals and doing it intuitively right. So there must be something in the background doing it. And now you know. Basically, the muscles in your back are actually going to help you to get your arms down if you use them correctly. If you don't get the muscles in your back working, then you're gonna to have to actively move your arms down and whether you will get them down on plane every time, nobody knows. Not a long one today, but hopefully a wise one. Hope it helps you. If it did, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed to us yet, please do so. Little bell will give you notifications the next time I post a video. Keep safe, keep well. See you soon.